All right, well, the kids have already been playing outside for a couple hours, so I'm kind of pushing it right now, but I really wanna get my meal plan made for the week. So today I'm gonna reverse meal plan, try and use up some of this extra inventory that we've accumulated during quarantine and isolation. But I also wanna share some of my favorite tips for reverse meal planning, but also creating a meal planning system that we can actually stick to because I have felt like the biggest loser in the past when it comes to meal planning because I never could stick with it and it never worked. So let's talk about that today. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. We love sharing tips and tricks about how you can simplify your house quickly. And of course, that applies to meal planning and groceries and all of that too. So I'm here right now because I need to go through this drawer to see what's in there and also the fridge to do my reverse meal planning. And so let's talk about a few tips about how you can make your meal plan in minutes. Like we can get this done really quickly if we keep a few things in mind. And so today we're gonna do reverse meal planning where we just look at the groceries we have on hand and we use those to to make our meal plan for the week. So step number one is to look at the perishables, our produce and our meat, what things are gonna go bad soonest and use those as the basis of our recipes. Okay, but here is what's so awesome about how we have our fridge organized now is that I love that I can just pull out this produce bin and see exactly what we have. Here is all of our produce in the fridge. So I have broccoli that needs to get used up, I have bell peppers that need to get used and then we usually just have like there's some spinach in here and some green onions um, a couple of mini cucumbers those are kind of pretty standard that we have on hand that we'll snack on or we just add you know as embellishments to dishes um, but the main things that i really want to make sure don't go bad are the broccoli and the bell peppers and so next now i can pull out our meat bin so this is any fresh meat that we have in the fridge right now. So I have some ground sausage that needs to get used up and then also some ground beef. And so just by looking at these, I can think of recipes right off the top of my head that we would use these up. We could do tacos, spaghetti. So now that I have an idea of the produce that I need to use, I'm gonna use the bell peppers in the Pioneer Woman's uh, spaghetti chicken. And then I'm gonna use the broccoli in broccoli rice and shredded chicken. So two chicken dishes is gonna use up most of those veggies. And then I also know for the hamburger, we're gonna make meatloaf, but not just any meatloaf. We are gonna make, like I call it cheeseburger meatloaf because Corbin, our seven year old, his favorite food in the whole entire world is cheeseburgers. But I don't like to take all the time to form the individual patties and fry them. So I put shred shredded cheese in the meatloaf, which is a trick from Cracker Barrel, by the way. We just make kind of a long meatloaf and then I just cut it up and we put it on buns and we call it cheeseburger meatloaf. He thinks it's great and I don't have to go through all the work of making cheeseburgers. <laughs> so that's what we use the hamburger for. And then with the sausage, we're gonna make our Instant Pot Zupa Toscana. So that is already four meals just from that stuff that I know is gonna go bad within the next few days or week. And then after that, I also know we have some smoked brats in the fridge and I know we have some like steak fries or tater tots in the freezer. And so that's gonna be one of my quick and easy meals for the week. So I always make sure that I have a couple quick and easy meals for the week. So if the day gets away from us, just like it sometimes does, I know I always have one or two super quick options. And that's what keeps us from ordering pizza or going to McDonald's. <laughs> But my second tip is to choose meals and recipes that you know inside and out that are super easy. I no longer try to think of new recipes to use up the stuff that's in my fridge. I don't go to like all recipes and put in chicken and broccoli and see what new recipes come out. I don't because I know myself and in the past when I would put those recipes on my meal plan and I'd put this on the fridge, those were the recipes that never got made. We would make uh, tacos and we'd make spaghetti. We would make the things I knew, but when it came to the new recipes, I found that I was always pushing those off and then I was feeling guilty because I had gotten more ingredients for them and they were going bad or they were sitting unused and then I end up with all these random foods in my house, right? Does this sound familiar at all? I don't think I'm the only one that this happened to. And so I noticed after observing this for a while, I'm like, oh, I don't like to try new recipes during the week because they take too much brain power and too much mental energy. And let's face it, by the end of the day when I'm going to cook dinner, I am gonna, I'm looking for the path of least resistance, right? I am looking for the easiest things possible. And so that's why now when I make my meal plans, whether I'm reverse meal planning or I'm just doing my regular meal planning, 
I choose recipes that I know inside and out and that I can make really quickly. That doesn't mean we don't make changes to the recipes or do things to change it up from time to time or seasonally. Yeah, we still have variation, but mostly week in and week out, I am making a lot of the same recipes. And you know what I realized? That's what my mom did. We ate all the same foods pretty much all of the time and she never apologized for it, right? It's only been since the advent of like Pinterest and all these recipe rev websites that we feel like we have to have all this variation and always be cooking these really good tasting meals for our family. I don't think so anymore. What's most important to me is that I'm cooking dinner every night at our house and we're not eating out anymore. That's what makes me feel successful now. Not that they're everything that I cook, they're like, oh, this is so awesome. This is the best thing ever. I don't care about that. <laughs> I wanna cook at home so that we save money. I'm always amazed too if I just take a minute to straighten up everything in the cupboards, make all the labels facing forward, put all the like items, like put all my chili items back here, my dessert items back on top. How even just that helps me to feel like, okay, we got this, everything's under control again and it makes meal planning a whole lot easier. All right, and then another tip when it comes to meal planning. So like I said, this reverse meal planning, this isn't usually how I plan out our meals. And I have a separate video on my meal planning system, but normally I start out when I go to grocery shop and I plan out my meals for the week based on very simple meals that I know inside and out. So you've maybe seen my meal planning sheet before. At the very bottom of it, it just has all of the recipes that I cook on a regular basis. So I glance down there, I pick out a few, few meals, and then I work backwards to get the ingredients for them. How's that different? So basically, the premise of reverse meal planning, if you do it on a regular basis, is that you go shopping and you look for things that are on sale or things that you can buy in bulk. And so you stock up on those things with the idea that you're saving money because you're paying less per serving for those ingredients if you're getting them on sale or in bulk. So very logical, right? Like that makes a lot of sense. But when I used to do that in the past, what would happen? I would get all of this food home and then a lot of it needed to be divided up because it was in bulk. It needed to be put in you know, smaller sections so that I could freeze it. And what I found was that I would have so much inventory of all this food I bought in bulk, but I didn't always do a good job of using it up because it was too much inventory for me to manage. And I even have a friend who said, you know what, I finally decided that I don't like cooking frozen meat. I don't like having to take it out. I don't like having to thaw it. I rarely get the timing right. And I don't always feel like it cooks as well as fresh meat. So what she's decided for her family is that they only use fresh meat, but she said by doing Doing that they cook at home much more frequently so she said yeah I used to save money on meat when I would buy it in bulk or I'd buy it on sale and I would freeze it but with what we've saved from eating out I can afford to buy fresh meat that I would rather cook with every single week and we're eating at home more which is usually a healthier option and so it's figuring out what works for you <laughs> because sometimes i see how other people meal plan and do this and i'm like oh i need to have a big extra freezer and a big extra fridge and extra pantry space and i need to buy it in bulk and i need to go to costco and i need to go to aldi and it was overwhelming to me it was just too much to manage where now i go to one store i still try to shop wisely if there's something on sale i'll buy a couple extra but I don't load up my freezer or my pantry because it's too much to manage and I don't do a good job of managing it. And like most things in life, I find that things that are highly simplified seem to be what I can actually stick with week in and week out. So that is my rant on <laughs> meal planning. It's really just finding what works for you. If you have a system and you can buy stuff in bulk and you're successful with using it up and getting it portioned and in the freezer, that's awesome, keep doing that. But if that hasn't worked for you, if trying new recipes and having a big recipe binder that you're pulling recipes out of and oh, I just get kind of tired thinking about it. If that doesn't work for you, then don't do it. Even apps like that are designed to save money and you look for coupon codes or you scan your receipts or all of that, it is too stressful for me. <laughs> I need grocery shopping and meal planning and cooking. I need it to be simple and streamlined. And when it is, I'm successful with it and that's what saves us money. I don't have to use apps or coupons or sales to save money. I just know for us, if I'm just consistent with 
the meals I have planned out and actually cooking them at home, that saves us that saves us the same amount of money as I might have been saving in the past from buying in bulk and then having to throw food away every few months. So I also have a few videos with some of my favorite recipes. So my favorite chicken recipes, I like to cook up chicken in bulk. Like I like to cook up a bunch of chicken at once and then use it in a bunch of different recipes. My favorite Instant Pot recipes, love our Instant Pot. We use it at least a couple times a week. Um, so I'll link to those videos down below because that has helped simplify it as well. And of course, any recipes that I mentioned for our meal plan this week, I will gladly link to those below as well. But I'd love to hear how have you simplified meal planning and how have you made it so it's something that you can stick to and if you have any apps that are like super simple then I'm on board with that but I don't like I just oh when it's too many apps I don't I just don't stick with it right <laughs> so leave your best tips below I'll definitely look forward to seeing those if you haven't done so already we'd love it if you subscribed but thank you so much for watching I hope you're doing really well I'm gonna go let the kids back inside <laughs> now so they're getting really tan it's it's hot here in Minnesota <laughs> right now which has been kind of fun so I love you I look forward to visiting with you again soon